Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Branded by Fire by Nalini Singh. This is book six in the Sai Changeling series and is part of my series deep dive chatty spoilery video series that I'm doing. Get comfy, get yourself a drink. If you haven't read the book, probably don't watch this video because I do go very in-depth into everything that happens in the plot. And if you haven't seen the other videos in the series, I'll leave a playlist down below. I won't be holding the book up the whole time because my hand will get sore, but I will pop a picture up on the screen of the book cover so that we remember what we're talking about. As I said, this is the sixth story in the Sai Changeling series, and this book focuses on the relationship between Mercy Smith and Riley Kincaid. Mercy is a Dark River Leopard Sentinel and Riley is a Snow Dancer Wolf Lieutenant. They are both very alpha characters, they're both very dominant personalities, and this causes a lot of tension and issues in their relationship. Prior to the beginning of this story we had learnt that the two of them were assigned as pack liaisons between their two packs because they both belong to the two primary predatory packs in the area and they have a working relationship with one another. We also know that Mercy thinks Riley is a stick in the mud and that and Riley enjoys pushing Mercy's buttons. By now in the series it is really hard to pick up these books and read them out of order because you do require a lot of world context knowledge for them but hopefully I will try and explain that as, as I go or if not go back and check previous videos. In terms of trigger warnings I think the one thing to know is that this story uses the plot of suicide bombers and also people being coerced into such a situation without their consent and there is also kidnapping. This book actually has more sex in it than the previous books although I don't consider it to be particularly explicit. Well it's not as explicit as some of the other things that I read and also quite a bit of violence. The book opens with Mercy as she has left Dorian and Ashaya's mating ceremony. Dorian and Ashaya were mated in the previous book and Dorian is Mercy's best friend however she's just feeling really frustrated because she is a dominant female in a pack and all of the other dominant males have already been mated. This is a really awkward position for her to be in because she is not someone who would accept a submissive or a more submissive partner in her life because it's just not who she is and she's aware of that. She comes across Riley as she's walking through the woods and the two argue, banter and bicker and then have a really hot sex scene within the first chapter of the book which is not the norm for the Side Changeling series but it was great and it really showed that these two have a relationship and they love to push each other's buttons and that there is a real grudging attraction between the two of them even if they don't want to admit it. The next day a Psy woman walks into a bar and she has a briefcase and inside the briefcase is a bomb and it, it detonates and kills her, destroys the building and also injures a whole lot of bystanders. We don't get a huge amount of follow-up from this particular event but there are subsequent events that take place so this is just the start in that chain. We discover that both Drew and Mercy are getting a lot of pressure from people around them. Riley's brother Drew really wants to know who Riley slept with and Riley tries to fob him off for the time being and also Mercy's grandmother is very concerned that Mercy hasn't yet found a mate and her grandmother is the alpha of a leopard pack in Brazil called Azura Sun and so she sends two of her male sentinels up to Dark River Territory to see if they would be compatible with Mercy, which Mercy is rather frustrated by because she didn't ask for her grandmother's help. She knows that her grandmother is coming with the best intentions, but at the same time she's really frustrated by it. Lucas, who is the Dark River Alpha, sends Mercy out to investigate a scene that has been reported to have dead smells coming from it. And at the scene she crosses paths with Riley and the two discover a rogue lynx cub Willow who has run away from home and is terrified and as it turns out she found her parents asleep unable to respond to her and her older brother was kidnapped and so she ran away because she thought that her parents were dead. Riley and Mercy take Willow to Tamsin's house. Tamsin is the Dark River healer. The rest of the pack investigate what happened to Willow's parents. They find them and they are able to bring them back and get the story of what actually happened. Willow's parents reveal that their oldest child Nash is a genius who works in the field of nanotech and he was kidnapped and they were drugged. Riley and Mercy go out to their home and they begin to search the property and they discover signs of technology that they haven't seen before and Mercy also finds a bracelet on the property grounds that has the name Bowen on it. Bowen is a character who does appear in the series later on. He is human and he gets his own story eventually. As they're heading back from the crime scene Riley and Mercy stop to have lunch in a diner and there they stop another side bombing 
attack. So suddenly they've become involved in this bigger, wider plot. When he drops Mercy off, Riley has a standoff with Eduardo and Joaquin, the leopard sentinels her grandmother sent up to her property and Mercy is entirely unimpressed with all three of them to the point where she tells all three of them to get off her property, which is why I like Mercy because she does not take anybody's crap. She is very fiercely independent and sometimes this is to her detriment in her relationship with Riley, but at the same time, she doesn't want to put up with any of their crap. That same night, Riley has a reoccurring nightmare about his sister Brenna being kidnapped and tortured by Enrique Santos from the first book. And we know that Brenna is mated to Judd, but Riley feels a sense of responsibility for her being her older brother. And this nightmare ends up sending him out to Mercy's property. And he's just sitting out in the car and she realizes that he's there and she invites him in and the two sleep in the same bed and she holds him while he goes to sleep. And she promises not to ask what's actually brought him there, but she just recognizes that he needs comfort. And for changelings, comfort is touch and knowing that someone else is there. And for Riley at the moment, that's Mercy. Mercy and Riley track down this Bowen character and they find him and they have a discussion and Bowen releases Nash back into their custody in exchange for a meeting with the alphas of both packs. So they take Bowen to meet Hawk and Lucas and Bowen reveals that he is a member of the Human Alliance, a group that is opposed to the Psy and that he had gotten word that a rogue paramilitary arm of the Human Alliance had, were planning on kidnapping Nash against the Human Alliance leadership's orders. And so he and his team came in to kidnap him first to keep him out of their hands. He begins to realize quite quickly that that was a really bad move given the history that the changelings have had with kidnapping of their people. And so he offers to swear allegiance to the pack, which would make him subject to pack law and thus garners a little bit of goodwill from the two leaders of the packs because by placing himself under their jurisdiction, he's accepting any responsibility for what happens as a result of his actions. There's a really cute side scene where in their role as liaisons, Riley and Mercy are sent out to deal with a bunch of the wolf and leopard juveniles. And there's also a couple of humans in the group as well. And they've basically been terrorizing each other. And when they get there, they find out that Sasha Duncan, Lucas's mate, has also intervened and her punishment because she's an empath is to make all of these very dominant teenage males say one nice thing about every person that they caused harm to. And all of the juveniles just think she's the devil because they don't want to say those nice things about anyone. And she made them. And I thought it was just a really wonderful scene because it really showed the different ways that you could handle the situation. Mercy and Riley have another scene where they play with each other outside. Mercy, I think for the most part is in her leopard form for the majority of the scene. And it's her way of ceding some control in the relationship to Riley. And they have another outdoor sex scene, which is also very really steamy, but it's actually the stuff that happens before that that I find really interesting because they're both starting to feel more comfortable around one another and to accept who they are with each other. Having realized that the Psy on the, who are part of those suicide missions are actually completing them against their own will, the South American Leopards leave after Mercy tells them to go, but not before Riley has a fight with Joaquin and beats him. But then Riley withholds crucial information from Mercy about their investigation. And when she finds out she is pissed and she breaks off their relationship completely because he withheld the information to protect her and she doesn't need protecting. And that's the point of both of them being these very high level soldiers within their packs. And so it, the fact that he would do that really, really hurt her because it's like saying that she is not capable of protecting herself. And part of this is due to Riley's hangups. Mercy has teased him the whole way through the book that he always thought that he would end up with a very quiet, submissive wife who would stay home and stay safe and he could protect her. And he's ended up falling for someone who really doesn't need that and who will never be the submissive little wife at home. And that all comes to a head when she finds out this information and she is furious. Hawk and Riley spar after this in order to work out their frustration. For Hawk, it's dealing with some things that have happened with Sienna Lauren. And I'll talk about that a little bit in the world building section. For Riley, it's obviously dealing with the fallout from everything that happened with Mercy. And it's during this sparring session that Riley realizes with quite a bit of shock that Mercy is actually his mate. And the shock is due to the fact that he never thought that he would end up with someone like Mercy. And 
suddenly he he's acknowledged it and he's realized that no this this woman is the is the woman he wants to be with there's a little bit of groveling and mercy and riley make up he talks to her about raising brenner after the death of their parents which is why he's so serious and so concerned about protecting people because he had to do that from a young age and he took on that caretaker role. And also Mercy begins to explain that the bikini story that we found out about in Hostage to Pleasure, where she was Miss Bikini Babe, I think, what was it, 2067. And she entered the competition because some guy in her school had made her feel really bad about herself. So she did this out of spite and ended up winning and then used it to rub it in his face because she just knew that she couldn't put up with that from a guy and I kind of love that story. I think that's a really great one. Because Riley finally realized that Mercy was his mate, they had entered into the mating dance. However, Mercy doesn't realize that initially. And it isn't until she's told by someone else that they can smell that someone has made a claim on her that she finds out about it. And in the changeling world, the female has to accept the mating bond for it to click into place. And so she's sitting with this for a while because Riley hasn't told her. In the ongoing investigation, they find the body of another Psy who has died, this time fighting the compulsion to complete whatever mission he has been programmed to complete. And then Bastion and Mercy's father, Michael, confront Riley, I think in a parking lot, about his relationship and his intentions towards Mercy. And then Mercy finds out that her mother, Leah, has invited Riley to a family dinner with her parents and her three brothers. And this freaks Mercy out to no end. But everyone does survive the dinner. It's revealed that the Human Alliance has a drug that can block Psy abilities, but it does have a side effect that quite often it does kill the Psy, and that the Human Alliance is targeting Nikita Duncan, Sasha's mother, as their next victim. And so everyone works towards warning Nikita and getting her out of her building, where they assume that the attack is going to take place. Some of the juveniles in the pack go missing and Riley and Mercy are sent out to find them and they find a note from the Human Alliance, or the Rogue, group of the Human Alliance saying that they're going to be setting off a bomb somewhere in the city. And so the packs are racing to find this bomb. Mercy accepts the mating bond right as the bomb goes off. She and Riley are both injured in the explosion, although eventually they both recover and they move into Riley's house in the woods. And we find out that Riley had built this, this house for his future wife. However, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's very sort of rustic and very live out in the woods and very cabin-like. Somewhere along the line, someone made the point that had Riley mated with a nice submissive wolf, she would never have lived in this cabin because it was too, would be too rough living. Whereas for Mercy, it's perfect. She loves it. And the two begin their life together, which is really lovely. So that is the main romance story with some of the other elements woven into it. In terms of things that we find out about the greater world, we find out that Riley's younger brother, Drew, who is also a lieutenant, is currently moving around the Snowdancer territory quite a lot and reporting back to Hawk. So he's roaming quite a bit. And Drew's book is Play of Passion, so it's in three books time. But at the moment, Drew is moving quite a bit. And so whenever he visits the den to see his family, it's sort of a special occasion. We find out a little bit more about the changeling hierarchy. So when Mercy and Riley stop the Psy bombing in the diner, they're not the only changelings in the diner. There's actually a group of teenagers from less dominant animal packs. After everything is said and done, it is their it is part of their duty, part of their code of honor that they make sure that those changelings get back home safely because both Mercy and Riley come from very strong, predatory, very dominant animal packs. And because of their place in the hierarchy in those packs, they are they must make sure that these kids get home safely. And I thought it was a really nice scene to show that just because they they might be predatory animals in their changeling form, it doesn't mean that they don't interact with other changelings who might be considered prey in a negative way. In this book, Anthony Kyriakis acknowledges just how smart and how dangerous Caleb is. And we also find out that Anthony is the head of the rebellion within the Psy. And he's now in a position as a Psy counselor to have the information he needs in order to keep in front of things that are happening. Sasha continues to work with Toby Lauren on his latent Psy abilities. So Toby is one of the younger kids that Judd and Walker brought out of the Psynet when they formed their own little psychic network, which we call the Lauren Net. They needed strong enough people in order to maintain this smaller network. For them, that was Walker, Judd and Sienna, who are very strong Psy, but Toby has enough latent Psy abilities in order to offset some of that as well. And it's revealed that every Psy network needs to have Psy in order to stabilize the net. Sienna is also given a position 
as a soldier in the Snowdancer hierarchy and this is because Hawk relents and acknowledges that she needs to have a place because she's at a loss because she's not a changeling but she is a dominant character and so she doesn't quite fit in the hierarchy. It's a bit like Judd ending up with the lieutenant position. So it's a trial basis. She's come in as a soldier. However, she's also having trouble controlling her powers and Sasha ends up confronting Hawk and suggests that for a short time, every so often, that Sienna actually comes and stays in Dark River territory in order to get her psychic abilities under control. Part of the loss of control is a result of Hawk himself because we know that there is something between these two characters and something is not quite right and it's causing a lot of psychic distress to Sienna and causing her powers to spiral and we find out that she has combat related powers so it would be quite disastrous if anything happened and so she starts to spend time in Dark River territory. Nikita Duncan continues to show that she does have some measure of, of affection for her daughter Sasha and she ends up finding and sending her a very rare very valuable book on the Esai that most of that the council has worked really hard to wipe from existence and this causes Sasha to begin to investigate the author of this book. The netmind communicates with Faith and lets her know that the Cynet is dying but it doesn't know why. This becomes very relevant later on in the series. We find out that Sasha is pregnant and everyone is very excited by this. We meet two members of the Windhaven pack which I believe are the Falcons and that is Adam who is the wingleader and Nadia who is the pack healer and they've come to create an alliance with Snowdancer and Dark River and we also find out that Tatiana who is one of the Psy Counselors has attempted to assassinate all of the other council members. There's a lot of plotting going on in the Psych Council at the moment. My last section is all the fun things that I loved about this particular book. I really love the sibling dynamic between Riley, Drew and Brenna. When Drew realises that Riley has slept with someone and is trying to get that information out of Riley, Riley sicks him on Brenna by insinuating that Judd has made her unhappy. So Drew goes running off to confront Brenna and Judd, which has the flow on effect of raising their interest in what's going on with Riley and the whole thing is just really really funny and really cute in that family dynamic way where you try to deflect something and it just comes back and bites you in the butt so I really like that scene. Roman and Julian, Tamsin's twin boys, have a kitten called Ferocious which is hilarious because the leopard shifting twin kids have a kitten and it's adorable. I really like the relationship between Mercy and Indigo who is the snow dancer lieutenant and it does come up at one point that both packs only have one female dominant soldier within the main within the top hierarchy. They do talk about sometimes sometimes there are more females and sometimes there are not and it just happens to be who is in the pack at any given point in time. But Indigo and Mercy have a really good relationship where they can relate to one another and they get on and they don't argue which I thought was a really nice choice because even if they're not best friends it's good to see that you can have these two really strong female characters can have a functioning relationship with one another especially since they have to work together a lot. We find out that Mercy is really close with all of her family so we do meet all of her family so there is Michael and Leah her parents and then her three brothers Sage, Bastion and Grey and there is one scene where her brothers convince her to go out to dinner with them and then take her out dancing because they need her as their wing woman and it was just nice to see that family dynamic. And probably one of my favourite scenes was where a scene between Hawk and Ben. So Ben is one of the wolf pups and Hawk is looking for Judd and he finds Ben and he asks Ben if he's seen him. And Ben replies that he's outside with Brenna doing kissy stuff. And Hawk asks how he knows that and he says Judd told him and that he probably shouldn't follow because he would be grossed out. Because Ben is the, the changeling who played with Judd in the hallway in Caress by Ice and obviously has continued a good relationship. Ben really loves Judd and the whole scene just made me laugh and smile because because it's so innocent and so childlike. I just found it adorable. So that was Branded by Fire. Again so much is hap so much happens in these books now and a lot of it is the greater world building stuff. So trying to sort out things that are part of main plot and things that are world building stuff becomes really complicated but I am enjoying it. And Smart Women Read Romance recently did an episode on Branded by Fire so I'll leave that link down below as well so that you can check it out if you want to hear some other people talk about the book. But yes that is my wrap up for book six of the Sci Changeling series so stay tuned. I will be getting to books seven, eight and nine hopefully in February and I don't know if all three videos will come out in February but they will definitely come out as I can get to them. If you are joining in with the Sci Changeling Readathon our first live show is on the 
30th of January or 31st of January if you are like me in Australia and we'll be talking about books one to three. I'll leave all of the information down below. I hope that wherever you are in the world you are staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.